There are a lot of companies that have spent a lot of time over the past two decades figuring out how best to rip off gamers, the consumer, how to trick them into believing that their product is going to be worth a specific amount of money, how to convince them through trailers that eventually don't at all resemble the game, how to convince them through marketing speak that these things are going to be something they aren't, how to tell them something that will get the money into their hands without having to show something. This isn't just with things like the traditional loot boxes, there are a lot more nefarious ways we see this done. We see companies actually cut out final, completed game content simply to sell it afterwards and make a quick buck. We've seen companies cut out content to say they're getting a free update later to gamers. We've seen games cut out content simply to charge them as entire expansions months after the game's release, and better yet, we've seen companies lie profusely to gamers, sell them a product that becomes something different, like Black Ops 4, releasing in a state with no microtransactions, and eventually becoming a cesspool of absolute unethical anarchy. But there's one company that we've never quite associated with this kind of behavior, one company that's been kind of immune to it. Which I find a bit odd since they're kind of the company that started the DLC trend in the first place, at least on consoles. They're the company that tested the market with $2.50 armor for your horse, which back then seemed insane and caused outrage. People were furious and today $2.50 for some cosmetics seems kind of cheap, doesn't it? Pretty insane how quickly we've rationalized and been conditioned to believe this is just how gaming is. But the truth is, underneath all of that, Bethesda's actually spent a lot of time whipping off a group of people, a very large group of people, that not only buy their game, but basically make it. And that is the modding community. Look, I get it. Fallout 76 was not great, and it still isn't. It is improving a little bit, but it's not the game it should be, and it very much so to this day still defines the term cash grab. But there's a lot going on underneath the surface of the Bethesda experience, the games that they put out, that people aren't talking enough about. It was a big ordeal, it was a big controversy two years ago or so, but now it's kind of quieted down, and no one seems to want to acknowledge the problem that still exists at the root of every single Bethesda release that you're playing today. Going back to things like Oblivion or Morrowind, this is a problem. So today we're going to talk about modding. We're going to talk about the issue that comes about when Bethesda rips people off and does not treat the people that are making their games better the right ways. To get started, we have to look at exactly how all of this works and what modding really even is in this space. Look at some of these mods. Some of these things are awesome. Modding a game is a very difficult process. It's essentially taking the code and the engine and the source material that you have in front of you and molding it into something new, creating something out of your head and using the tools at your disposal, the modding tools, to create, to build, to design, to develop. Some people are developing entire experiences within these games using these modding tools. Modding requires hundreds of hours of time, energy. It's essentially like they're developing something on their own because, well, they are. There are entire teams of people dedicated to mods. Some mods take years to finish, and it's not surprising. These mods have been the backbone, the foundation of Bethesda experiences from Oblivion on, but more particularly with Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, and, of course, Skyrim. And yes, it is worth pointing out that New Vegas was only published by Bethesda, not developed by Bethesda Game Studios. But regardless, people have been building things to fix everything that's broken with Bethesda games, to make everything that doesn't work right, everything that doesn't feel right, everything unfun about Bethesda games better. Modders have fixed numerous releases. Modders have made these releases what they always should be. Modders have created things that make these packages much more than the sum of the $60 parts that were offered. They're the reason that Skyrim is still so relevant on Steam. They're the reason that Fallout 4 didn't absolutely sink under the weight of water. They're the reason that Fallout 3 to this day is played as much as it is. I mean, look at some of these mods for Fallout 4. I can get the Space Marine outfit from Doom, the BFG, which is one of the craziest guns in the entire game. I mean, it's barely usable without destroying yourself. You can get Morgan's outfit from Prey. Look at this. Here, we have an entire cache of alien weaponry at your disposal. Weaponry that you would not find anywhere else in the game. Weaponry that resembles the alien blaster that you could find in Fallout 3. These things are wonderful. 
except for one huge problem. Some of these things are made by people not getting nearly enough credits. In 2017, Bethesda created the Creation Club. It was this idea to reward modders, to create a place where they could support the people that are supporting their game. But that wasn't the reason for this at all, and it's certainly not what ended up happening. Instead, Creation Club was a way for Bethesda to sell the traditionally free mods that built the PC community. A way for them to make more money off of the things that are designed to be free. The things that are used to fix the problems with their own games. And the things that sometimes they don't even make themselves. Look at some of these things in the Creation Club. They say designed by, created by other people. Now, Bethesda promised support of these people, financial support, but that's not quite what happened when Creation Club launched. Instead, what these modders were being paid was usually between $600 to a thousand dollars for an entire mod and they were paid that in little installments so every certain development milestone they'd get let's say two hundred dollars until it was completed and from there bethesda took all the revenue that that mod ever made even as they sold it for egregious prices some of these things cost 10 15 20 dollars of real world money this is insane because a lot of these things have full quests attached to them. This quest right here took me into the irradiated wasteland to find the BFG. Here's another quest created for me to pick up my prototype Gauss rifle. Here's another one designed for me to go grab some prey goodies. These take a lot of work, a lot of time. Even just the aesthetic design of these things is hard to code, program, create. And the Creation Club does nothing but take advantage of these people. For a point of reference, War Thunder, for example, rewards some of their modders with as much $6,000 to $10,000 payments for their mods that make it into the game. And even better than that, they still receive a 25% revenue stream from those things as they're being sold. The problem with Creation Club is that it's a giant, easy way for Bethesda to manipulate the consumer base into spending money on things they shouldn't have to and manipulate modders into believing they're getting the requisite compensation for their work when in reality they're the artist that's essentially being told hey we know your work is worth x thousands of dollars we'll give you 600. Lots of real mods incredible mods are buried by not being featured in Creation Club because there's a lot of people out there that aren't going to take this kind of treatment. Let me ask you a quick question do a tiny thought experiment for me. Could you imagine how relevant Skyrim would still be if it wasn't for mods? Do you think it'd still be more relevant than The Witcher 3? Tell me, do you think Fallout 3, Fallout 4 better yet, would still be as relevant and as played as it is without mods? Without mods to fix the bugs, without mods to fix quests, without mods to make the game better, without mods to make the story more interesting? Of course not. Bethesda is reaping millions of dollars of rewards from people who are only engaging with their products because of the work of individuals who aren't being compensated. These are the people that are fixing their game. So the question is, how do you pay modders? It's the million dollar question, isn't it? Sometimes, literally, the million dollar question. These are people that have chosen to spend their free time creating something for your game. Sometimes things that are better than what you've made for your own game within your own development house. Now obviously you can't compensate them like you would a developer that's working for you, but there has to be a way, right? There is. It's really simple. There are a lot of modders that don't want to sell their product at all. They do this for the love, the passion of the game, for the players. But for the people that do, for the people that spend, let's say, years creating something like Fallout Miami, which is basically an entirely new game in an entirely new location, those people deserve a bit of compensation. So, what's the appropriate thing to do? That's easy. Set up a new creation club, a new system that allows modders to register their products, be screened by you, Bethesda, and then if you do choose to, Bethesda, charge for their mods, it's really simple. Forget the lump sum payment. Give them a cut of every single sale that mod makes. Then everybody wins, don't they? The person whose mod is to be sold no matter what, the person who's worked years on something is going to get compensated appropriately, and better yet, you're going to make 75% of the revenue on a mod that would traditionally be free anyways. Is it that difficult to offer that developer, that person, that individual 25% of that revenue? Places like War Thunder have figured it out. And better yet, if you really want to support your game, quit acting like modders don't exist. Yes, I get it. Bethesda allows things like Creation Club. They acknowledge modders all the time. Except, do they really? How many mods that are free do you see Bethesda highlighting? How many free mod projects do you see Bethesda supporting in any way, shape, or form? You don't. You almost never do. 
because Bethesda still acts like modders are the black sheep of the PC gaming community. The only mods you can really use on console are very basic mods that they approve of. They still act like there's not hundreds of thousands of modding projects out there that are worth our time and attention. And that's unethical, because the reality is, is that take Fallout 76, which you can't mod at all, or Fallout 4, neither of those games are what they should be. In fact, it's arguable that Fallout 4 was borderline mediocre at launch. But today, Fallout 4 on PC is an incredible experience, thanks to a lot of people that have nothing to do with the paychecks that Bethesda is sending out on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So why am I making this video today, in 2019? Well, because I think it's a little bit unfair that this conversation has been buried after the initial outrage over Creation Club. I think it's unfair to the people modding, I think it's unfair to the community, and more importantly, I think it's unfair to forget that Bethesda is ripping off the people that are helping them, as well as the people that are supporting their games with their dollars. I think it's important to put this kind of manipulation into perspective when you have hundreds of thousands of people who say things like, Fallout 76 will get better, it's worth your money. Buy it, it'll get better, Bethesda fixes their games. When in reality, Bethesda is notoriously known for never fixing them at all. The people that fix them are the people Bethesda likes to walk on. Sure, Bethesda's gotten a bit better over the past two years. Creation Club has even gotten a bit better, but even today, Bethesda is not doing nearly enough. Even today, modders are not getting the respect they deserve from these companies, and it's not just Bethesda, but it's primarily Bethesda. Even today, projects are shut down, work thrown to the wind. But as I'm not asking you to change your entire business model, in fact, I appreciate your steps to kind of fix some of these problems I've discussed here, but you and I both know that you fixing them is really not anything you've put a lot of focus on lately. Just don't bite the hand that feeds you, and more importantly, don't shun the people that make your city what it is. Well guys, that is it for today's video, and as always, the start of a dialogue. What do you think of Bethesda's current position on all of this, on modding in general? Do you believe that there should be a market for modders to be paid reasonably in a better and more coherent fashion? Or are you kind of okay with them working free and are under the impression that, hey, they chose to do this, so why need they be paid, I guess? I, I don't really... I don't know. I, not, there's nothing wrong with that side of the argument. I'd love to hear what that side is. I frankly don't understand what that side is. So inform me if you can, if you are one of those people. Answer any and all those questions down in the comments below. Let's have a real conversation. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you are not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. I put out more gaming analysis and examinations just like this one, hopefully three times a week, usually every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So hit subscribe so you do not miss any of those. Um, I've said this in a couple of previous videos. I'm going to continue to say it until it's done, uh, but I am moving. Uh, so all of this is kind of going to change and look different, but more importantly, I may miss an upload or have to change that Wednesday, Friday schedule or Wednesday, Friday, Sunday schedule, um, maybe a week or maybe a second week. So just be on the lookout for all that. I'm sorry if you counted those on that days. Um, and I'm also sorry if you didn't enjoy this video. I put out more and more each and every week. Maybe you'll catch one of those. Maybe you'll enjoy that. But if not, thank you for giving me and this channel a shot. And until next time, guys, I'm out.